All right, so we're in the shower here, and uh, we're going to fix this drip here. So once you're uh, done taking a shower here and you turn it off, it will continually drip. Here, you just heard a drip. If we come down here, you can see it's all wet. Wet around the drain. It's because it constantly drips, and it's because uh, the cartridge behind the the lever here, or the handle in here is actually uh, leaking. There's probably an O-ring or something in there that's uh, letting the water past. So we're gonna take that apart and get that replaced. All right, so this is the part that I got from Delta. So we got RP46074. I like how it shows you what it replaces, that's nice. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure you got the correct spacing down here because like I said they make they make one that's a little bit I believe wider than this one and that won't fit and it's still a type uh, a type P so on the back here uh, we'll see at the top it says well, maybe we'll see maybe, there we go uh, for 1314 series, so if you have a 1300, 1400 series, that's not the same, even though that, like I said, these valves look the same. And it says replace a single control valve cartridges with gray upper cap made after 2005. So this was shipped right from Delta and didn't cost me anything because it's a lifetime. All right, so here are our uh, shutoffs for the shower and uh, actually had them had the uh, plumber when he put the lines in put these in down here which is a nice uh, nice option so we're just gonna uh, turn those off now that turns off the water to our uh, fixture in the shower so we can uh, open that up okay so it's always a good idea to put a toll down so you don't lose anything And then we need to get this handle off. So the water's already off, we can open it up. There's no pressure or anything on it. And there's a little tiny set screw in here and we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at uh, what we need for that. Okay, so it's an eighth inch Allen that I have in here. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to crack this loose because it's pretty tight because it actually holds the handle on. I don't think it's long enough to get this way. Maybe, maybe we can. Oh, there we go. Um, I have had this off before, so there's a, a whole uh, other video that I had started, and I had the wrong cartridge for this. Um, I went to the store, because I was like, I'm just going to fix this, I'm finally annoyed with it, and went to the store, and I, I had uh, had the number off of this unit, and this is a 1314 series, or 1314 multi-choice is what it's called, you can see it there towards the top. So I found one and I didn't write it down. I got to the store, I'm like, 1300, 1400 series, Delta, shower, whatever. I'm like, oh, that's gotta be it. So I get to the whole process here, I get this handle off. And the first time taking this off, there was a lot of calcium buildup, so this screw did not want to turn at all. And you don't want to twist it off, so be really, uh, really careful with that. And then what I did was I took the handle off and uh, I soaked it in like vinegar to kind of dissolve that calcium. The set screw here, I believe, was was stainless. Oh, we, there we go. So yeah, you can kind of see it's a little crusty in there still. So uh, anyway, I had the wrong uh, the wrong cartridge. After I got it out, they look very similar, but the actual spacing that goes into the uh, valve that's in the wall is a little different, so it won't work. So that's a, that's the point where I called Delta because I was like, well, maybe it's a lifetime faucet and, and sure enough. So I guess in most cases you should probably just call the uh, manufacturer. All right, so next we got to get this off, this cover here. And it's just a matter of kind of twisting and pulling. And it came off easy because I actually had greased this O-ring last time that just slips on there. Then there's a... Uh, uh, it's like a nut that holds this, the cartridge in here. 
and just kind of spin that loose and take that off and then this would be the cartridge now you want to note the direction it says here hot and uh, type, well, I think it says type P, but H. You want your hot on this side so that it matches up with uh, with the handle and the, the uh, directions here. If you put it in, which you can, for some reason you think they could design this so that you could only put it in one way, you can actually have it flip-flopped and then you would actually have it incorrect. So I believe this one says type P, which this plastic part then must be used in another valve or another cartridge that's exactly the same but it's the second part that's a little different when you pull this out you're gonna have all the water that's up in the line up in here up to the shower head so you shut the you shut the water off at the bottom but there's probably still gonna be water up in here all in this line that comes down to the top of this valve so when you pull this out expect water to come out here alright so the first time I took this out this was the toughest part it was uh, very difficult so what I did was kind of pull up and down like this as I'm pulling out and I wish I could set up the camera on the tripod but it's in the vehicle for some reason I forgot it was in there and what you're doing is those o-rings are fit really tight so they don't leak and that's why this takes as much effort as it does and there could be a little bit of vacuum in here because remember, like I said, all that water above here. So when we pull this out, it's going to start draining out the bottom here. Holy moly. Mm. Woo. This is so much easier if I had a second hand on this. There we go. If that was just the issue, get that water out of there. Now my hand is wet. I don't know if I'm able to pull on this. No, let me grab a towel. All right, let's try this again. Oh, the last time I put this together, I used that plumber's grease to make sure everything was lubricated well. That thing just doesn't want to give up, does it? Oh, the other thing you could do is probably put a uh, pliers on this stem here and pull. I think we're going to try that. All right, so this should do the trick here, I'm thinking, because we got it basically broke loose. There it is. is our cartridge here okay so let's uh, compare all right so I open it up gives you uh, some directions here on how to do it like I said the biggest thing is to make sure you put that cartridge in the correct way so that um, your hot and your cold are working as they should and then there's also a uh, adjustment uh, right in here, and that's the, I, get, I think to set how hot your water actually gets. There must be like a mixing valve in there so you can't uh, scorch yourself if you have your water heater set to stun. So uh, let's take a look at the valves. All right, so here they are. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so they look the same. This one obviously has a little bit. Of the darker color that's the original um, I believe it says something about not taking it apart but we're going to though I'll show you what's in there so you can see that's that's the problem I had last time and uh, maybe uh, if I still got a clip of the first time I did this I'll show you the other valve I think the, the bottom part was blue and it was a little bit wider so um, this top part though they use in I think almost all of them because it says yeah type P uh, right up on top here it says type P and it said that on the other one I had as well so these top parts of the cartridge is the same it's this bottom part so uh, we're not going to take the new one apart just because I want it to work 
and that's the, there's a uh, like a stainless steel thing in there. So what you can do is you can pull this apart. Um, I'm guessing this is what's leaking on on here because these kind of feel a little hard, the, the rubber or whatever, and there's a little spring in there. So I'm assuming that's what dries out because that's what shuts your your water off. So you look, you get that little stainless steel guide plate in there. So as the the water comes in, this is your hot and your cold. And then, like I said, there's a, a mixing. It's not a ball. It's more of a cylindrical stainless steel item. And you know, maybe not. Maybe it's not leaking. Well, I don't know. Like I said, these seem pretty dry. I don't want to take the, the new one apart, but I'll show you this. It could be in here too. I think there's O-rings. There you go. So yeah, okay, we got O-rings in here. So it could be leaking past maybe these O-rings, even though these O-rings seem like they're pretty decent shape. You got this little stainless part in here. So that's what it looks like. And I don't know, I know on different uh, shower units that we've had um, that these parts, I mean, it didn't use a cartridge. It like used these and it, you had to put these right in the valve, in the wall. You use like a little pencil and pushed it in. Um, that was, I thought, the problem on one of the other ones. And then those used like a, a mixing ball or whatever. But anyway, so that's what that looks like. And like I said, you're not supposed to take this apart. Now why? You can't just rebuild this because you would think you could just get the O-rings for it. And as long as this, you know, this is machined in here, this seems pretty good. You would think you could just get a couple springs, some O-rings and just rebuild this thing. But I don't know, maybe they don't want the uh, average consumer doing that, but it doesn't matter. Either way, it didn't cost me anything. Um, the incorrect valve I bought the or incorrect cartridge I bought the first time was over forty bucks, so I'm kind of glad I did did call Delta. So uh, let's take a look at the valve. Okay, so it's hard to see because this I need to light right where the camera needs to be to see in there. So the left uh, bottom hole is going to be your hot side, the right side is going to be your cold, and then that top is your supply to the uh, shower head. Um, I don't think there's any reason to have to clean anything up in here. I mean, I guess you could. You can kind of see there on the side where, uh, that's actually where the little plastic drum here, where that rides. That's a little rough, a little bit of calcium in there, obviously a little bit of, uh, green going on there on the brass. You get the same thing on the other side. But that's not, that's not where it's leaking. Um, because like I said, this is your, these two up in here are going to be your supply coming from uh, those valves downstairs and somewhere in that mixing ball it's letting the water leak and come out that top hole here so um, you really don't have to worry about anything in that valve itself I mean I guess it wouldn't hurt to kind of clean it out but you obviously don't want any debris in there either so uh, let's get this thing put in all right so what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of uh, plumbing grease on this here on these o-rings here in here just to kind of help guide it in because there's some uh, rough edges and I think that'll help. Uh, reading directions too it says uh, do not twist the cap and lower housing of the new cartridge to take it apart which that's what we did with the old one and it says if for any reason they come apart make sure that they are locked back into position so I suppose you'd have uh, issues with water coming out of your faucet. And then one other thing to note on the top here there's an adjustment on uh, how hot your hot is so uh, it's like you're mixing so you can't s scald yourself I guess is what you do is you pull out on this white piece and you can kind of twist it so what I did is I pulled it out and twisted it to the hot so when you put it on absolute hot all it's gonna dump then I would think would be hot water it was set um, in the middle here and that's what all these little marks are on the top that's kind of like your increments so all you do is kind of pull that out and then you can adjust it so if you don't if you're worried about like your kids using it and turning it all the way to hot you can actually set it up so it's actually dumping a lot of cold water so that it never gets super hot but I like to have it set up so it's hot so when the kids and wife use up all the hot water I can put it on hot and I'm getting only what's left in the hopefully the water heater 
instead of mixing it with cold water. And just to note too, this is actual plumber faucet valve grease. It's not uh, like car grease. There's a difference. This will not rot out plastic or rubber O-rings. All right, so here's our valve. Here's our new cartridge. So again, you look, there's a uh, little marking alignment pin here, and that's going to correlate with the notches here on the side. Come on, focus. But you can see there's uh, one at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. So you could put it in like this, and that's actually upside down, and that's where you end up with issues with your hot and cold. So just make sure they got a big H marked on the side. You want that to your hot side. That's going to go in like this. Oh, and then uh, right here, you can see on the side, that's what's causing this little discoloration here, the little calcium buildup. It's just side of this plastic, so that really doesn't matter that that's rubbing in there. And then, oh, there we go. We're going to kind of just work the thing back in like... like the first time here, pulling it out. Oh boy. Uh, let me do this two-handed here. All right, so when you got it in, that's what it should look like. Your H and your notch. The biggest thing is that big O-ring that's around that cartridge, that's what you have to get slid in. Um, once you got that in, you'll kind of feel it. And then that's why I want to put some that grease on there when you're putting that in just so that you're not rolling that old ring. Then we got our uh, sleeve here. They call this brass. Um, to me, it looks more like a chromed, maybe it's a chromed brass. And I wouldn't go super tight with that. It shouldn't have to be, because like I said, once that's in there, it's in. You maybe could wiggle it a little bit. But I didn't have to take it off with a uh, wrench or anything like that, or a pliers. So, or a pliers, I should say, not a wrench. It was actually pretty loose when I first pulled it out, so that's good. And then uh, the next part we got is going to be uh, this part here. And I put a little bit of uh, grease again on that O-ring because that just keeps the water from the shower getting behind the wall. Stuff that might bounce off the shower stall. And I kind of like to twist it as it goes. And that should be that. Let me grab the handle. All right, so orientation, if you look over here, it says off. So you wanna make sure your handle is off. This is cold, and then when it's wide open, you got hot. Um, I didn't tighten it up. Boy, that goes on way easier when your uh, little stem of that cartridge isn't all covered with calcium. So, and then you're just gonna use your Allen key here to tighten down that set screw and that set screw is just basically a friction fit on that stem. All right so I got the water turned back on. Uh, we're gonna flush the system. It says to let it run a little bit I guess to flush out whatever. Um, if I didn't mention I had the towel down there just so that you don't lose anything down the drain and obviously you don't want to be standing in water when you pull that cartridge out. So here we go. getting warm, which is good. We have the faucet in the warm direction. And it's starting to get hot. That's pretty hot. Let's put it more towards uh, the middle here. All right, so that's good. Middle definitely seems like it's warm. Cold is definitely cold. And it goes to off. Yeah, you can kind of tell the way I have that set. I may adjust that. When you have the uh, water turned to hot, you lose all your pressure because you're not mixing anymore. It's just strictly hot. But I suppose majority of the time you're not going to be running it straight hot. You're going to be running it more of a mixing anyway. So I know it says to let this run for a little bit. I'm kind of running it in all directions here to clean whatever debris I guess that's in there. Uh, 
All right, we'll let that kind of do its thing. Uh, we'll come back a little bit and we'll see if it's still dripping. Or if it still drips like before, I guess. All right, so it has been, oh, I don't know, quite a while, probably about an hour. And there's not even one little tiny drop forming. So that's, uh, that's what it was. When I did uh, call Delta to get that cartridge coming, uh, they asked me what the problem was, and I said, well, with the faucet off, it drips. And they're like, oh, it's the cartridge. It, they didn't even question me on it. They didn't ask me uh, where I bought it from or how much. They just said, what type of faucet or fixture do you have? And uh, they sent it out. So there you go. That's going to be the fix, which absolutely seems ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, it'd be dripping away right now at this point. And this thing's not that old. I would say maybe four or five years this has been in, so it doesn't take long and uh, parts go bad, but definitely if you got an issue with uh, any type of fixture, whether it's a Delta, a Moen, uh, whatever, I would call the manufacturer first to get the, uh, the parts coming. Alright, so that's going to be it for now, and that's going to be your Delta 1314 multi-choice cartridge fix.